Uh, we've got a talker from Henley Business School, which is Ooh. one of the... Think, yeah. <laughs> come on, come on. This, it's quite interesting. Henley Business School is one of only a handful of business schools in the entire world that are triple accredited. Yeah. So I'm not entirely sure what that means, but they, they sound good. Um, so Stuart Morris is one of the lecturers from Henley Business School. I've been doing some different things on business startup with Stuart for a number of years, and he's got some fascinating ideas on business. He started small businesses, he started big businesses, he's lost money, and he's made money, um, and he's done all sorts of interesting things. He's also a real geek on stationery, um, and he did actually swap the hotels. This is his own pad of uh, flip chart paper. And Paul I've never will seen be a ridden. speaker bring his own flip chart paper before. Um, so I'm quite interested to see what happens next. So please help me in welcoming Stuart Morris. Thanks, Alan. It's always worrying being introduced by Alan because you never know quite what he's going to pick on next. <laughs> So um, the triple accreditation, uh, just to do the corporate bit, uh, there are three organisations that accredit business schools in the world, and Henley has passed the accreditation by all three of them. Yay! It makes no difference at all to what we actually do on a day-to-day -day basis. So. Um, Nikki asked me to speak for 30 minutes, and Alan's used five of them already, so this is going to be pretty swift. Uh, but we're talking about social media today, and I thought, why not let's talk about social selling? So, can anybody tell me what the common thing in each of these images is? Nature. Nature's a good start. I'm looking for something a little bit more specific. Life. 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 That there are animals and there are plants present. Shapes. There are two creatures in each image, just to give you a bit more of a clue. Symbiosis. Symbiosis. If I had cookies, I would present prizes. In each of these images, uh, I'm running an event later, which I'll trail shortly. I'm beginning to like the idea of cookies. That's obviously become a theme. <laughs> <laughs> That's social selling. <laughs> in each of these pictures, we have an example of a symbiotic relationship. Two creatures who exist codependently upon one another. In fact, there are creatures on the planet. We have um, hummingbirds whose bills have evolved so precisely that they can only feed from one particular plant. That plant's flower has evolved so precisely that they can only be pollinated by that species of humming hummingbird. If either species was to do disappear, both would disappear. The thing about a symbiotic relationship is the bee does not negotiate with the flower about the size of the meal. The flower has no ability to complain when the bee pisses off with a load of pollen and doesn't actually deliver it anywhere useful. So in nature's symbiotic relationships, there's no quality control, there's no negotiation, and there's no creation of value. There is simply a transaction that both creatures engage in. Human beings are the only creatures in nature who negotiate a transaction based on value. So the farmer plants and grows the corn. The miller buys the corn, grinds it into gr uh, flour. See, this, it's an example I've used a dozen times and just ground to a halt there. The baker buys the flour, turns it into bread. I go to Tesco's and buy the bread. At each stage in that process, value was created. And what is the difference between a symbiotic involuntary relationship and a voluntary relationship? The answer is, it is what has given us the freedom to specialise. It is the reason why we're sitting in an air-conditioned um, room, why we're able to eat custom cookies instead of being hunter-gatherers out there in the cold, all of us simply trying to feed ourselves. This voluntary creation of value, this negotiation, is what has enabled human beings to lift ourselves from the hunter-gatherer existence we had 10,000 years ago 
to a place where we can afford healthcare, where we can afford education, where we can afford to do things like this and specialise in particular areas of business. So actually, trade and entrepreneurship and business is fundamental to who we are today. It is the difference. So, after that slightly surprising introduction, almost everything you ever wanted to know about social selling in 30 minutes, except I now need to cross that out and put 20 minutes. <laughs> Old school selling. Old school selling was we sent emails, we made phone calls, we qualified leads, and we did sales demos. And we filled the funnel as big as we could with leads, and we qualified them out, and out the bottom of the funnel came deals. Weirdly, I've known salespeople who were actually afraid to sign the deal because that meant their person was no longer in the funnel. They dropped out the bottom. It's like, my funnel's getting smaller, I'm closing deals. What? The issue is that without selling, none of our businesses exist. It doesn't matter what we're doing, we need the miller, the farmer, the baker. Each of us needs to sell something to somebody. It almost doesn't matter what. If you've got more money going out than coming in, you're going bankrupt. And that doesn't matter whether you're a university, a charity, British Telecom, the government, you or me just as our families. We need more money coming in than going out. It's a fundamental business truth. And without sales, nothing happens. So sales is good. Not in the greed is good Wolf of Wall Street sense, but it is actually a thing we have to do because without it, our business models simply don't work. And the number of students that come to me with great business ideas, and there's no, yeah, where are your customers? There are no customers. How are you going to find customers? Oh, we're going to sell it to students. There's 20,000 students on campus. All of the students are our potential customers. Yeah, there's only five of them are ever going to buy that. So what's your personal definition of success? I want a million pound house backing onto the Thames and a Ferrari on the drive. And your business idea? Chinese takeaway. <laughs> yeah, we can run the numbers. It's never going to work out for you. Without sales, we don't have a business. And without business, we don't have revenue. Without revenue, we go bust. I've done it twice. The first time was a reasonable effort, quarter of a million quid. Second time, 3.3 million pounds. I feel that was a better showing. <laughs> so, customer development is the process of winning, keeping and developing customers. And you'll see where I'm going in a moment with social selling. Customer development is at the heart of the business model. And customers are won by offering a strong sales value proposition. I am selling something you want and kept by excellent customer service. And this is the difference that social media have made to sales. They, the reviews on Amazon, we were just talking a moment ago, Nikki has a one star review on her book on Amazon. The person has merely demonstrated their own ignorance, but I bet it hurt when you saw it. I hadn't seen it, I was told today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But we've all heard of companies who have tried to suppress some bad news. It's gone all viral on Twitter. And actually, if they'd fessed up and dealt with it, it would have gone away. So lifetime value, let's very quickly talk about. So, so this um, slightly shaky video is uh, my beloved lead singer of a rock band. As you can see, we're both quite shy, retiring individuals. This is her not as the rock band as the mild-mannered head of Department of English Language. I am in awe of how much this woman spends on makeup. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked her, and she won't tell me, but I'm guessing it's in excess of 50 quid a month on product. I'm a bloke. I get in the shower, whatever I reach for, I put on me, I wash, I get out of the shower. She has a row of bottles that go in all sorts of different places. So let's say it's 50 quid a month. In a year, what is that? 
600 pounds. Thanks, Alan. Because my brain had almost ground to a halt there. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so Jane and I are approaching our 50th birthdays in the next couple of years. I'm going to leave it that vague. She might have another 30, 40 years, quite you know, looking at the statistics, at 600 quid a year on makeup. Anybody do 40 times 600? 6,000 times 4, 24,000. Plus inflation. <laughs> <laughs> so let's multiply that by about 3. To, to just as a rough estimate. So we're looking at £75,000. Now, I was wondering why, we, when we walked through John Lewis's and we passed the Clarin stand, they are always so keen to give her freebies. Because she's worth 75 grand to the company. <laughs> the freebies are trivial. It's the lifetime value of the customer that is the true value. It's not this deal. It's all the deals. A customer who will stay with you, a customer who will keep having custom cookies. You haven't had to go out and sell again. You haven't had to go and find them. You haven't had to advertise. They've come to you and they've said, I want more. They've also gone to their friends and said, here is a great company. Let's do, you know, do business. They become your champions. This is, by the way, the topic of an entire whole day workshop I run, and I'm scratching it as fast as I can into this. So lifetime customer value, and a girlfriend who's the lead singer in a rock band, how cool is that, um, is really, really important. Don't just think about the customer in terms of this deal. Think about them in terms of how much they will ever spend with you. Um, OK, question for the guys more than the girls, but Feel free to, anybody, the last three cars you've owned were all from the same brand. No? Anybody? As a, okay, we've got a few, couple of girls, yeah? Maybe, yes. Yeah, I kept them so long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's interesting, because usually I get a room full of blokes who've always bought whatever brand it is. So what, what's your? BMW. BMW, okay, why? <laughs> no, that's a beautiful, no, 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 that's enough, stop there, stop there, stop there. It's customer service and you like the salesman. There you go. So actually, because this salesman has built a relationship with you, not in the no. sense, <laughs> you're prepared not to bother going by a car from anyone else. And that is social selling. We buy when we are happy. Businesses don't do business with businesses. People do business with people. And the core of all of this is, can you create a relationship with somebody? If you can create a late relationship with somebody, they are far, far more likely to buy from you. So social selling. Great. This, there's a red circle here. I'll have to wash out from the Network. It's what we've been talking about all day today, making connections. The thing about virtual and social networking is we can network with anybody on the planet. Engage. Uh, I love to talk about Instagram where you're going out and sharing stuff with people and engaging in their conversations. Promote others. This has been the one that really surprised me. Everything, all the research we do, all of the reading I've done on effective networking, whether it's social networking or business networking or both, is that when you introduce two people and say, Vanessa, you really need to meet Alan. He's really good at presentations. Alan, this is Vanessa. She's something really good. Um, <laughs> 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 I was hoping that the badge might give me a clue there. And marketing. That. Marketing, thanks. <laughs> yeah, not at all. Doing a muffin? She looks wonderful colour? in orange. Yes. Yeah. I, I the whole colour. The whole yeah. colour thing. So, <laughs> presenter tip number one, generally pick on two people you know both of. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you introduce two people at an event, the chances are they will spend the next five minutes talking about how great you are. It's really, really strange, as long as they both 
kind of knew you. No, they wouldn't. They'd go off and talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> when you promote others, they bring you with them. So if you start bigging somebody up on social media, very, very quickly they will start bigging you up on social media. It's a natural thing we do. And educate. Don't sell in the please buy my stuff sense. Become an authority on whatever it is you're doing. And you will find that people will come to you. You're not trying to sell, they will want to buy. It's a really, really interesting phenomenon. And social media means we can do it more easily than we've ever done. In essence, this is what salesmen have always done, but now we can do it with far greater reach and the tools are available to small businesses where they weren't. So, now we come to why I have brought Because these aren't just um, flip charts, they are A1 post-it notes. Flipboard <laughs> envy. <laughs> 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 So, post-it note size envy. A, a great friend of a great friend of mine runs a, an independent. <laughs> it's going to peel off as well. <laughs> a great friend of mine. <laughs> We've lost Nicky. We've lost Nicky. <laughs> great friend of mine runs an independent stationery supplier. My friends call him my dealer. <laughs> post-it <laughs> notes. Oh. Stick it to the door. Yeah, stick it to the door. No, that one's, that one's not going to play ball. No, we, might, we might have to lose that one. Right, so, be social. Use social media to win, keep, and develop customers. You guys have been the ones at the, thing all, at the event all day. How might we use social media to win customers? Ideas, please. Start conversations. Start conversations. Be friendly. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, sorry, interested. <laughs> so there was a comment back there give away something valuable. We can unpack that one for hours. Um, Brendan Bouchard, anybody follow? this guy has a whole business model built on that it's quite fascinating he is the most irritating human being on the internet hi it's Brendan Bouchard I'm so hyper um, even more than me so give away something and that giveaway value is about creating a following it's educational what Brendan does is he's giving away his teaching materials. He's doing that educate part of the four. So. They're going to hate me for this, but it's going to work. Yes. <coughs> Use social media to enhance your value proposition. OK, everybody, f well, no, that's a daft question. Value proposition, the thing we sell. So McDonald's don't sell burgers, McDonald's sell an entire experience. It's really important to make sure you, we understand what it is we're selling. BMW aren't just selling cars, they're selling the whole brand image. You, know, you sit in a BMW, you feel different to when you get into a Skoda. <laughs> Quick question, what's the most expensive car can you, you can buy from the VW group? Lamborghini. No. Bentley? No. I'm going to walk over here for this one. Bugatti Veyron. 1.5 million quid. What's the cheapest car I can buy from the same company? Skoda. Skoda Fabia, six grand. Seat, VW, Audi, Bentley, Lamborghini, Bugatti. 
all from the same company. Different value propositions targeted at different customer segments, the same business. The Top Gear joke about a Skoda being a Golf or a Polo, uh, Audi being a Golf or a Polo, a Seat being a Golf or a Polo, it's absolutely right. They're all based on the same engine and all the rest of it. They've just wrapped them in a whole different... So, sales marketing, how can we use social media to enhance the value of what we're doing? So articulating it. That's a C. What else? Solving problems was that. Lovely, thank you. Having a personality. Having a personality. <laughs> Matt Jackson, a friend of ours, um, has a wonderful story on that where he worked for a huge faceless corporate energy company and they said they wanted a Twitter presence. And he said, I can get more followers than energy company. About a year later, they fired him. He had got more followers than them. <laughs> the amount they'd spent, every bill that had gone out said, follow us on Twitter. Yeah, every customer had had this message over and over again, and they'd got a couple of hundred followers. Yeah, exactly. Because there's no personality, there's no value in doing that. I want to come back to how can we enhance our value proposition. One of you said solving a problem. Actually, what you can do on social media is listen and your customers will tell you what their problems are. You may have this wonderful green whiteboard marker and you think this is the dog's bollocks of pens. But actually, if I listen carefully, I may hear that my customers don't want a green one. They want a red one and a blue one and a green one. If I wasn't listening, I wouldn't know what my customers actually want that whole customers are always right. They're not always right, but they're usually more right than I am. So listening enables us to identify what our customers want, and social media means we can listen to a lot of people quite efficiently. So... Sorry? Yeah, I'm going to run out of space. <laughs> You should see what my stationery bill runs to at the university. Um, and use social media to provide outstanding customer service. Any clues on how? Being reactive. Excellent. Listening. Acknowledging. Acknowledging. That's a huge one. If you just go silent when there's bad news out there, it, that's when it starts to snowball. Asking them how they're getting on after three months. Follow up. Ooh. Follow up. Thank you, that's an easier one to write. <laughs> <laughs> now, interestingly, follow up on, on Twitter could be quite risky because it's very public. On the other hand, you go out on Twitter and ask the question, you get some positive feedback back, everybody sees it. We've all heard the adage, you know, if somebody has bad experience of you, they're likely to tell seven or eight friends. If they had a good experience with your business, they might tell one friend. Actually, Twitter and social media in general are almost a way you can turn that around. You can encourage people to speak loudly about the good experiences. So, how are we doing for time? We're doing okay. I want brownie points if I end this on time. Yes and no. Perfect, Nikki. Um, 
you, you can, I'm going to lose now because I'm going to ask that question. Um, you can be very personal on social media, or you can just be scattergun. And there are software tools to enable you to do the scattergun stuff. Um, it's, it's a choice. It's a, a way of doing it where, yes, you might email them firstly. So that's the personal, you, know, you, bought, you don't air the dirty washing in public. Um, but then you encourage them to share a review and then share that on Facebook. <coughs> so yeah, I, you, use common sense rather than just tweet at Stuart L. Morris, hey, that Volvo you bought 15 years ago, is it any good? Yeah, yeah don't know. Haven't owned it for 10. So. It's interesting when, when you're looking at your next slide thinking, what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I have run out of time. Um, but I wanted to give you a quick summary of, of who you've been listening to for the last few minutes. My name is Stuart Morris. I have no Nobel Prizes. I have one crazy hobby. I have, as I alluded to earlier, been bankrupt twice. I have two startups currently underway. Um, I have four teaching awards at the university. I have three children, uh, six directorships currently. I've been a magistrate in the UK for 12 years. That number is now 3,770 cases. Four people yesterday discovered what the inside of a prison looks like. I've done 15 startups in the last 20 years and I have 180 essays to mark this week. It's not <laughs> going to happen. <laughs> As well as teaching about entrepreneurship and business, I am an entrepreneur. I'm not an academic. I do it. I'm with you guys in the trenches trying to make this stuff work. Nikki has been an inspiration to me. I just couldn't get my head around Twitter until I got hold of your book, it was whenever it was, so thank you. Um, and I'm looking for the whole Instagram, what on earth we do there. Um, but I think small business as represented by this room, is the bedrock of the economy. It's not the high tech, high growth gazelle businesses that everybody's trying to find. It is the stable growth businesses who will still be here in 10 years time, not sold on to some corporate VC or whatever, that will provide the jobs and provide the income for the economy in the long term. And so from one of the top business schools in the world where the economists sit there and go, isn't this wonderful, we're just crunching all these numbers. I like being in a room full of people who are actually doing it. So thank you very much. If you want, um, quick plug, more on sales, um, at the end of June, I'm running uh, Grow Your Business, Make More Sales, Maximize, maximize Lifetime Customer Service. Um, if you use the, if you either click on the barcode or that link, uh, it will automatically give you 15% off for being a friend of Nikki's. And yeah, we'll get that up um, to you guys. And uh, we'd love to see you for a whole day of selling stuff. Thanks very much.